In this video now, I will introduce you to how we can add materials, lights, and a camera to Blender. Currently, all these objects look grayish because they, they don't have any material associated. It's just the basic default gray. So we can select, for example, this black here. Then we go to this icon, Material Properties, click New and say Lag Wood Material. For the moment, we simply give this a basic color like this. Then go to here, click on to this icon here and we actually see a lot of these things here this is actually from the EMS share reference so let's actually get rid of all this perch okay so now most of this stuff is gone look there lag wood material we can actually find materials by typing in a name see black wood material so here we gave this a material but we don't really see anything here and this is fine because we are wireframe and then viewport shaded and then the next one is material preview and rendering so if we click on this there now you see the material we could Select maybe here this upholstery. Click New and then say Upholstery and let's make this red. Select the shell. We call this shell. Very good. Okay, now so you see quite quite simple. What we did was just give colors to each material. And uh, let's start maybe with the red object because that's the easiest one also to see. Because there are a lot of functions here. So what does all this do? It's actually very logical. Um, <coughs> in computer rendering, a material simply doesn't know what is metal, what is wood, what is plastic, and all this stuff. Uh, we as a designer simply have to create the illusion of something that looks like red leather, um, white plastic, wooden legs. And the tools to do this we have all in here. So essentially what I tried to say is with everything what we have here, we can make something look like plastic, look like glass, look like wood, look like uh, paper, silicone. Because essentially everything deals with the color, the reflectivity or smoothness or roughness, um, how far light passes through it or not, if something is clear or not, and let's say this should be some sort of a glossy plastic, just so you get an idea of it. So here we have something called metallic and specular. This might at first be a little bit um, for like a foreign language, but metallic means this will make look something like a metallic reflection. Specular, like a plastic reflection. So when we increase this or decrease this, you can see how now this is very dull. Like there's no reflectivity, like it's uh, yeah, a matte surface. And with this increased, it is actually very reflective. But a surface based on if it's polished, sandblasted or scratched also has a roughness. So this is then what we decide here with the slider. Now, no roughness means this is like a super high um, 
glossy plastic. With the roughness increasing, you see how the reflectivity, step by step, gets actually um, more dull. Till we can make a roughness so high that essentially it looks like a sandblasted surface. While we're here, let me turn this down to zero and turn this up. There. And I don't know if you notice actually visually the difference. Why is this metallic? Why is this specular? And the answer here is very simple. If you take copper, polish it, the reflection of copper is not like here white. The reflection of copper would be tinted by the copper material. And you see here, we see reflection on it, but the reflection is tinted. And that is basically what defines something being metal. If we set this to plain specular, then this would be more plastic, artificial leather, and such. Okay, we when we go down <coughs> a little bit more, we have Endosotropic, this is more something for brushed metal, sheen, sheen tint, clear coat. Clear coat is actually something we would use for the wooden lag when we have another well, polyurethane layer over it. So we can do this here, clear coat. Then we have index of refraction and transmission. This basically defines how light is bent. Think about water. When you put a stick into into water, the piece of or the submerged piece of your stick will look like it's going a different angle than the piece above the water surface. So this is calculated by the index of refraction. Transmission then will decide if something is transparent or um, not. Also, glass uh, can be clear. Glass can also be sandblasted. Then we would do this here again with the roughness. Emission, well, that's very easy. Emits light. We can make a surface also emit light. Emission strength. Alpha, now this is for transparency again. And there's a lot more. I don't want to go into all these, all these details. The last thing, um, to quickly talk about is also here this viewport display. So let's go to here and you see everything's grayish and we have this object selected. Very good. If I select this and then adjust this color, oh, there's also something that happens. So what's the difference between the color here and the color there? So this is simply, how could we define this? Uh, an identification color, maybe? This is not something that will show up when we do a rendering. This is more something we could use to help us see everything differently while we're in shaded mode so that not everything is all the same color. So we could customize these a little bit more, or since we have this random color, we can uns could also simply use random color. You can see how this is so much easier to read because every object has a different color compared to something like this. No? I use this viewport display color sometimes when I have many objects that use metal, then they're black a lot of objects that are wood, then they have kind of like a yellowish color. It makes it very easy to see um, without seeing the individual material, what objects might have what type of color. Good, so this is a quick introduction into how the materials work. In the next video, then we will go into how this would interact with a light source and a camera.